started the chapter study of the books. And to keep in mind, I have a sleepy little guy. I have a five-year-old and a small guy. Um, so hopefully he'll stay asleep. I am going to start with chapter 10 today. And you will see all that is in the book. And as I read today, I want you to be thinking about what you are wondering. And any questions that you might have. Because after today's reading, we're going to share two things we're wondering about on our chat room. So we're going to change it up a little bit today. Instead of answering questions on the Google form, we're going to share two things you're wondering about. Um, it could be you may be wondering about something that might happen. Um, you may be confused about something. You can share whatever you want to share that you're wondering about or that you have a question about. And then you can even comment on each other's posts. You, um, if you see something someone else is wondering and you think you know the answer, you can share that with them. Or if you want to um, comment that you're also wondering the same thing that they're wondering, you can share that as well. So you may want to jot down some things that you're wondering as we read right now so that you know um, what you can put on your class project when, you, um, when I'm done and I have to comment. Okay? So chapter 10. Stanley had no trouble falling asleep, but morning came much too quickly. Every muscle and joint in his body ached as he tried to get out of bed. He didn't think it was possible, but his body hurt more than it had the day before. It wasn't just his arms and back, but his legs, ankles, and waist also hurt. The only thing that got him out of bed was knowing that every second he wasted meant he was one second closer to the rising of the sun. He hated the sun. Now, think about that. He probably doesn't always hate the sun. What if he only hates the sun now? Because the heat from the sun makes digging the hole that much more toxic. That's his whole point. He could hardly lift his spoon during breakfast, and then he was out on the lake, his spoon replaced by a shovel. He found a crack in the ground and began his second hole. He stepped on the shovel blade and pushed on the very back of the shaft with the base of his thumb. This hurt less than trying to hold the shaft with his blistered fingers. The shaft of the shovel is like the stick part. As he dug, he was careful to dump the dirt far away from the hole. He needed to save the area around the hole for when his hole was much deeper. He didn't know if he'd ever get that far. X-ray was right. The second hole was the hardest. It would take a miracle. As long as the sun wasn't out yet, he removed his cap and used it to help protect his hands. Once the sun rose, he would have to put it back on his head. His neck and forehead had been badly burned the day before. He took it one shovelful at a time and tried not to think of the awesome task that lay ahead of him. After an hour or so, his sore muscles seemed to loosen up a little bit. He grunted as he tried to stick his shovel into the dirt. His cap slipped out from under his fingers, and the shovel fell free. He let it lie there. He took a drink from his canteen. He guessed that the water truck should be coming soon, but he didn't finish all the water, just in case he was wrong. He learned to wait until he saw the truck before drinking the last drop. The sun wasn't yet up, but its rays arced over the horizon and brought light to the sky. He reached down to pick up his cap, and there next to it, he saw a wide, flat rock. As he put his cap on his head, he continued to look down at the rock. He picked it up. He thought he could see the shape of a fish fossilized in it. So something that is fossilized means that it has created an imprint in something. So if a rock has been fossilized, it means that um, an imprint of something else has been um, pushed into the rock or printed into the rock. Um, fossils usually happen when something has been buried under the ground for a really, really long time. Um, a, um, an animal, a dead animal, can be pushed into the rock and then the outline of that animal can be left behind. Um, leaves can sometimes be left um, printed onto rocks when they get pressed up against the dirt um, and the rocks in the ground over a long period of time. So 
So that's what it means when it's um, something gets frosted. He rubbed off some dirt, and the outline of the fish became clearer. The sun peeked over the horizon, and he could actually see tiny lines where every one of the fish's bones had been. He looked at the barren land all around him. Barren means, like, completely empty, bare. There's nothing on it. True, everyone referred to this area as the lake, but it was still hard to believe that this dry wasteland was once full of water. Then he remembered what Mr. Sir and Mr. Pendansky had both said. If he dug up anything interesting, he should report it to one of them. If the warden liked it, he would get the rest of the day off. He looked back down at his fish. He'd found his miracle. So I want you to think about that. What does he mean when he says he'd found his miracle? Think about that. I'm not going to share yet. I want you to think about what you think it means. And if you're still wondering what that means, you can add that as you're wondering to our chat and we can discuss it. He continued to dig, though very slowly, as he waited for the water truck. He didn't want to bring attention to his find, afraid that one of the other boys might try to take it from him. He tossed the rock face down beside his dirt pile as if it had no special value. A short while later, he saw the cloud of dirt heading across the lake. The truck stopped and the boys lined up. They always lined up in the same order, Stanley realized, no matter who got there first. X-ray was always at the front of the line. Then came armpit, squid, zigzag, magnet, and zero. Stanley got in line behind zero. He was glad to be at the back so no one would notice the fossil. His pants had very large pockets, but the rock still made a bulge. Mr. Pinmansky filled each boy's canteen until Stanley was the only one left. I found something, Stanley said, taking it out of his pocket. Mr. Pinmansky reached for Stanley's canteen, but Stanley handed him the rock instead. What's this? It's a fossil, said Stanley. See the fish? Mr. Pinmansky looked at it again. See, you can even see all of its little bones, said Stanley. Interesting, said Mr. Pinmansky. Let me have your canteen. Stanley handed it to him. Mr. Pinmansky filled it, then returned it. So do I get the rest of the day off? What for? You know, you said if I found something interesting, the warden would give me the day off. Mr. Pinmansky laughed as he gave the fossil back to Stanley. <laughs> Sorry, Stanley. The warden isn't interested in fossils. Let me see that, said Magnet, taking the rock from Stanley. Stanley continued to stare at Mr. Pinmansky. Hey, Zig, dig this rock. Cool, said Zigzag. Stanley saw his fossil being passed around. I don't see nothing, said X-Ray. He took off his glasses, wiped them on his dirty clothes, and put them back on. See, look at the little fishy, said Armpit. So I'm not going to tell you what I'm wondering right now, because I'm going to share it on our Padlet, but I'm, wonder I'm wondering if you're wondering the same thing that I am. After we just read that section. Chapter 11. Stanley returned to his hole. It wasn't fair. Mr. Pendansky had even said his fossil was interesting. He slammed his shovel into the ground and pried up another piece of earth. After a while, he noticed X-Ray had come by and was watching him dig. Hey, caveman, let me talk to you a second, X-Ray said. Stanley put down his shovel and stepped up out of his hole. Say, listen, said X-Ray, if you find something else, give it to me, okay? Stanley wasn't sure what to say. X-Ray was, cl was clearly the leader of the group, and Stanley didn't want to get on his bad side. You're new here, right? said X-Ray. I've been here for almost a year. I've never found anything. You know, my eyesight's not so good. No one knows this, but you know why my name's X-Ray? Stanley shrugged one shoulder. It's pig Latin for Rex. That's all. I'm too blind to find anything. Stanley tried to remember how Pig Latin worked. I mean, X-Ray went on, why should you get a day off when you've only been here a couple of days? If anybody gets a day off, it should be me. That's only fair, right? I guess, Stanley agreed. X-Ray smiled. You're a good guy, caveman. Stanley picked up his shovel. 
The more he thought about it, the more he was glad that he had agreed to let X-Ray have anything he might find. If he was going to survive at Camp Greenlake, it was far more important that X-Ray think he was a good guy than it was for him to get one day off. Besides, he didn't expect to find anything anyway. There probably wasn't anything of interest out there, and even if there was, he'd never been what you could call lucky. He slammed his blade into the ground, then dumped out another shovel full of dirt. It was a little surprising, he thought, that X-Ray was the leader of the group, since he obviously wasn't the biggest or the toughest. In fact, except for Zero, X-Ray was the smallest. Armpit was the biggest. Zigzag may have been taller than Armpit, but that was only because of his neck. Yet Armpit and all the others seemed to be willing to do whatever X-Ray asked of them. Interesting. So he's the smallest one in the group, yet he seems to be the leader, and he seems to be the one that the other boys are a little bit intimidated by. I wonder why. As Stanley dug up another shovel full of dirt, it occurred to him that Armpit wasn't the biggest. He, the caveman, was bigger. He was glad they called him caveman. It meant they accepted him as a member of the group. He would have been glad even if they'd called him barf bag. It was really quite remarkable to him. At school, bullies like Derek Dune used to pick on him. Yet Derek Dune would be scared senseless by any of the boys here. As he dug his hole, Stanley thought about what it would be like if Derek Dune had to fight Armpit or Squid. Derek wouldn't stand a chance. He imagined what it would be like if he became good friends with all of them. And then for some reason, they all went with him to his school. And then Derek Dune tried to steal his notebook. So what do you think you're doing? asks Squid as he slams his hands into Derek Dune's smug face. Caveman's our friend, says Armpit, grabbing him by the shirt collar. Stanley played the scene over and over again in his mind, each time watching another boy from Group D beat up Der Derek, De Derek Dune. It helped him dig his hole and ease his own suffering. Whatever pain he felt was being felt ten times worse by Derek. So he's imagining if his new camp friends came with him to school and he had them all there to support him, what might happen to Derek Dune now, now that he has all these other boys to have his back, basically. Um, if Derek tried to pick on him, these other boys would mess with Derek and Derek wouldn't be so tough anymore. Okay, chapter 12. Again, Stanley was the last one to finish digging. It was late afternoon when he dragged himself back to the compound. This time he would have accepted a ride on the truck if it was offered. When he got to the tent, he found Mr. Pendansky and the other boys sitting in a circle on the ground. Welcome, Stanley, said Mr. Pendansky. Hey, caveman, you get your hole dug? asked Magnet. He managed to nod. Spit in it? asked Squid. He nodded again. You're right, he said to X-Ray. The second hole's the hardest. X-Ray shook his head. Mm -mm. The third hole's the hardest, he said. Come join our circle, said Mr. Pendansky. Stanley plopped down between Squid and Magnet. He needed to rest up before taking a shower. We've been discussing what we want to do with our lives, said Mr. Pendansky. We're not going to be at Camp Green Lake forever. We need to prepare for the day we leave here and join the rest of society. Hey, that's great, Mom, said Magnet. They're going to finally let you out of here? The other boys laughed. Okay, Jose, said Mr. Pendansky. What do you want to do with your life? I don't know, said Magnet. You need to think about that, said Mr. Pendansky. It's important to have goals. Otherwise, you're going to end up right back in jail. What do you like to do? I don't know, said Magnet. You must like something, said Mr. Pendansky. I like animals, said Magnet. Good, said Mr. Pendansky. Does anyone know of any jobs that involve animals? Veterinarian, said Armpit. That's right, said Mr. Pendansky. He could work in a zoo, said Zigzag. He belongs in the zoo, said Squid. Then he and X-Ray laughed. How about you, Stanley? Any ideas for Jose? Stanley sighed. Animal trainer, he said. Like for the circus or movies or something like that. Any of those jobs sound good to you, Jose? Asked Mr. Pendansky. 
Yeah, I like what Caveman said about training animals for movies. I think it would be fun to train monkeys. X-Ray laughed. Don't laugh, Rex, said Mr. Kamansky. We don't laugh at people's dreams. Someone is going to have to train monkeys for the movies. Who are you kidding, Mom? asked X-Ray. Magnet's never going to be a monkey trainer. You don't know that, said Mr. Penansky. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. Nothing in life is easy. But that's no reason to give up. You'll be surprised what you can accomplish if you set your mind to it. it you'll be surprised what you ac can accomplish if you set your mind to it. After all, you only have one life, so you should try to make the most of it. Stanley tried to figure out what he'd say if Mr. Penansky asked him what he wanted to do with his life. He used to think he wanted to work for the FBI. But this didn't seem the appropriate place to mention that. So far, you've all done a pretty good job at messing up your lives, said Mr. Pendansky. I know you think you're cool. He looked at Stanley. So you're a caveman now, huh? You like digging holes, caveman? Stanley didn't know what to say. Well, let me tell you something, caveman. You are here on account of one person. If it wasn't for that person, you wouldn't be here digging holes in the hot sun. You know who that person is? My no-good, dirty, rotten, pig-stealing great-great-grandfather. The other boys howled with laughter. Even Zero smiled. It was the first time Stanley had ever seen Zero smile. He usually had such an angry expression on his face. Now he had a huge smile. It almost seems too big for his face, like the smile on a jack-o'-lantern. No, said Mr. Penansky. That person is you, Stanley. You're the reason you are here. You're responsible for yourself. You messed up your life, and it's up to you to fix it. No one else is going to do it for you, for any of you. Mr. Penansky looked from one boy to another. You're all special in your own way, he said. You've all got something to offer. You have to think about what you want to do, then do it. Even you, Zero. You're not completely worthless. The smile was now gone from Zero's face. What do you want to do with your life, Mr. Penansky asked him. Zero's mouth was shut tight. As he glared at Mr. Pendansky, his dark eyes seemed to expand. What about it, Zero? asked Mr. Pendansky. What do you like to do? I like to dig holes. So, we are going to stop here. Okay, we are at chapter 13. And um, we will pick back up tomorrow with the next chapter, chapter 13. So what I want you to do is go on our class Padlet and share your thoughts. So share at least two things you're wondering about or two questions you have, and then comment on each other as well so that we can have a nice discussion about what we're wondering about so far in the story now that more things are happening. Okay? Logan and I say bye. Until next time.